G'day and welcome back to video 4 in this course, the title of which is Base 10 Numbers. The first thing to think about is what do we mean by Base 10 and what alternatives are there? So, you know, could we have Base 3 or Base 8 or Base 12 or something? The short answer is yes, we could. A base is an, is an arbitrary number. Um, other numbers could have been chosen. 10 is the number that we have. Let me say first off, I think the reason for 10 is that we have 10 digits. And so this is a handy number. And if we're going to be counting objects, if we match the objects with the digits on our hands, the fingers and thumbs, when we get up to a full set, if you like, matching all the digits, it makes sense to group them together in some way. We'll say that's one lot in some way, one collection that's the same size as that collection. So I'm guessing here, but to me it seems sensible. Just briefly, back in the 70s, I mentioned this the other day about new math and new maths as it was known in this country. Mathematicians had the idea that they had a couple of wacky ideas. One of them was that even young students should be learn about, learning about numbers in other bases so that they could better understand base 10. It was a nonsense idea, thank goodness it didn't last very long, but they did make some base 5 material. I've seen base 3 material. I mean it was old because it was left over as I said from the 70s, but at university one day I saw it and they were base 3 blocks and base 5 blocks. So let's not go any further with that. Basically you could collect things together in fives and then you could make a new group and, and so on, but it gets very confusing. What about base 2? Now strangely enough we do use base 2, but we don't teach it to young children. Base 2 of course uses ones and zeros and so we can have a number like so. That is a base, if it's a base 2 number, then it's based on 2 and powers of 2. So this is 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, 16s, 32s, 64s. I could do a whole lecture on that, but I won't. But you will perhaps be familiar with 1s and zeros as being, if you like, the language of computers. So because computers are electronic devices that use electrical impulses, and electrical impulses are readily measured as being on or off. That equates to the idea of a number one or a number zero. And if you only have two different states, two choices, then you're using base two. Base 16 is an interesting one um, where numbers are grouped together in 16 and the way they do that, and that's also used with computers, it's called hexadecimal. And basically they take the first, must be the first five places, hang on, ones, twos, fours, eights. The first four groups of four places have a single symbol. I can't go on any further because it will take too long to explain it all. Basically we have um, just a couple of other everyday examples. And other bases are not important in the primary or elementary curriculum. They're not taught in the secondary curriculum either as far as I'm aware. So, big deal. Why based, we've talked about the base 10, but why is 10 so important? Why should we pay any more attention to it than any other number? Well, it's because it is the basis for our numeration system. We can refer to it as a base 10 numeration system because it's all based around 10, because the numbers are made up of individual ones in the ones column and then collections of 10 ones in the 10 column, and then collections of 10 tens in the hundreds column, and collections of 10 hundreds in the thousands column, and so on and so on and so on. I know that you know that, but it's all based around this idea of collections. So a really, really important concept for students to understand is the idea of collections that are, that are recorded using a single digit for a single collection. So I'm going to introduce another term here. Now this is a little bit on the academic side. This was used in a research paper about students learning about place value and the authors who are experts in the field came up with this phrase collected multi-unit and I've realized that this is a really useful concept, not the words themselves, and I'm not going to take too long over this, but when we, when we uh, record a number, like 10 itself, 
the one here is both one something or other and at the same time it's 10 of something else so obviously it's 10 ones but at the same time it's one collection of 10 ones so at the same time it's one thing and it's 10 things and that is the the highly complex understanding that is behind a, a multi-digit um, symbol in other words a symbol is not just a single digit as soon as we get to the left of the ones place all the digits have this aspect to them that they're made up of individual ones and they're also in some way grouped together to make larger collections so as I said I don't want to belabor the point too much but this understanding is really really important now for that reason the materials that are used in the classroom for representing numbers beyond nine should allow for ones to be collected together to make a ten so some materials are not going to be very useful at all loose counters are pretty useless you know they're great up to nine they're you know they're okay up to ten but beyond ten if we don't have a way of of grouping them together in a recognizable whole one collection a collected multi-unit then all we've got is a collection of ones i mentioned this in another video um, in the 10 frames course about resources that i've seen for sale not so much in educational suppliers but at places like news agents where they have posters for showing numbers um, and they just have a whole mass of ones so for the numbers between 10 and 20 rather than showing a collection of 10 they're just a scattering of ones which is just about completely useless it doesn't help anybody to see 15 as 15 individual ones it takes too long to count you can't recognize it when you see it and unless you order them in some way it's just you know a lot whereas 15 is made up of 10 and 5 ones and the 10 is a is a group of 10 and, and we write a one for that because they're all grouped together so therefore the materials that we use should show that grouping I'm not going to talk at length about the teen numbers because again I've referred to that in the other course that I've already done about uh, 10 frames but let me briefly illustrate what I'm talking about so 10 frames are a recommended resource for showing multi-digit numbers because they're based on 10 it's a 10 frame now I have seen resources called five frames personally I wouldn't bother with them now you use five frames if you like and you may like to use them but personally I can't see the point we can make fives if we want to in a 10 frame because it's half of a 10 frame and five is a you know it's a cool number but it's nowhere near as important as 10 so 10 frames and then we can make any sort of teen number any number between 10 and 20 we just add some more counters and there we are we've made the number 16 but the beauty of it is the symbol for 16 the one and the six is illustrated by the resource so the one as I said before is a single collection so we need to help our students understand that when we write a number in the tens place each digit is referring to a complete collection so when we get larger numbers and we write a 2 for 20 and then we go to 3 for 30 we mean 2 and 3 totally filled in collections of 10 so when we refer to these and we say this is a 10 and these are the ones we need to not just skip over that and make sure the students understand when we say this is a 10 it's a collection of 10 it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten objects so it's not just an object called a 10 this is another mistake I think that that was made years ago um, seemed to be quite a few mistakes when I was a young teacher <laughs> that we were warned about so it wasn't that I was smart enough to figure it out but our lecturers who were very good said don't do this don't do that don't do the other they warned us against Cuisinier rods for example because the colors are just confusing and, and mathematically meaningless but there was a phase there with base 10 materials that we should call a 10 block which represents the number 10 we should call it a long okay so I thought okay I can't really see why that is and then when you have a hundred block you call it a flat and a 
thousand block I think they called it a big which wasn't very imaginative imaginative of them and we added new labels to them which I realized when I was doing my uh, research study uh, in my postgraduate studies that was completely wrong there was a, such a bad idea because children need to know that this one isn't just a one of something it's not just a long it's not just one of these stick things that represents this number it, and it's not even just a 10 it's 10 it's the number 10 it's a collection of 10 ones as I said it's important so when we use the 10 frame which is a recommended resource we've got this one collection represented by the digit one the numeral one and then we have the six ones on their own and they are represented by the six so any resource that we use for showing these numbers in the early years when the students go beyond nine and get to ten it must have a way of collecting them together that's why I said the counters on their own are not going to be any good if we just drag those down here and say look there's some counters the, uh, we need some other way of bundling the ten together so I might just illustrate that to to really make the point you might think well if we just move the counters and then uh, the ten frames and just you know put the counters together that shows sixteen as well it does and this is a collection of 10 and having a different color is helpful but that doesn't there's no way of recognizing that as 10 even if we put them together in two columns of five that's better than nothing but it's still it's not clear that they're grouped together so perhaps if you put them into a ziploc bag so the students had some method for for collecting them and, and when you had 10 you put them in a bag and zip it up then you could say this is one 10 you see this is the point that you need to be able to say this is one something and you can't easily look at that and say look one no it's a lot of things it's it's not one of anything all right I'm probably going a little bit long on this so let me cut to the chase um, the most important uh, foundation that you can help your young students with in getting ready for for base 10 um, more advanced base 10 work and certainly beyond 20 and on to 99 and all the operations work and all that study that they do with two digit numbers the best way you can help them prepare for that is to give them this idea of collecting ones together into groups of 10 so one activity would be one really powerful yet simple activity would be to say give the students some counters like this let's add a couple more let's change some colors so I don't even know how many there are give the students some counters and say all right what we're going to do is to find how many tens we've got and so we'll fill up a ten frame like this and it doesn't matter what the colors are that's a group of ten can we make another group of 10 and I'd probably try and make sure we don't have more than 20 so we're, we're really dealing with one 10 and some extra ones how many more have we got we can use the 10 frame two four six eight oh good there isn't 10 there are nine and then we can talk about what we've got and we can write the symbols down and we can give it a name and we can discuss it all and it's all based around this same idea I've already talked about that we've made a collection of 10 and because we've made a collection of 10 when we write it down we can write a one for the collection one collection and then with the ones over here there's nine left and then we can write the name for that in a word 19 and of course nine and we know this is all backwards because nine is on this it's the second part of the numeral when we write it down as a symbol but it's the first part of the word so we haven't got time to go over that now and teen will explain to our students that means 10 it's almost the same as the word 10 has got an extra e in there but that 10 part means this 10 here so in other words 19 is not just a collection of ones one two three blah, 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 up to 19 but it's a it's a structured combination of one group of 10 and nine ones and of course the same for all the others all right so that activity and then the reverse activity of course is to start with um, start with with materials that have been grouped 
and then ungroup them. Actually, that's not quite so important, but um, when the students are getting ready to learn about regrouping in operations, so for example in subtraction, if you had 34 and you were taking away um, 28, you couldn't take the 8 away from the 4 until you regroup one of the 10s. So that regrouping and ungrouping is really important, but that's later on down the track. So when we're looking at this one, this, this idea is the grouping into 10s and then see how many we've got and then record the result. Okay, we've come to the end of this video. This will be the shortest one so far. Um, and I look forward to talking to you on the next one.